Dear brothers and sisters I welcome each one of you to be in the presence of our Lord who is present here in the blessed sacrament Remain in the presence of the Lord Thank the Lord for having brought you at this time to reflect on your life Today the Lord is going to mingle with you he is going to be with you he is going to listen to you so make the best use of this time to be with the lord forget all that is happening in your mind at this time that you are preoccupied with your works with something that is worrying you in your mind with your tensions anxieties keep everything away thank the lord for this opportunity think that you are born now at this time and you have nothing in your mind than only to enjoy the brightness around you the people around you to be with the lord who has given you birth thank the lord for having brought you into this brightness on this earth thank the lord for every good deed that he has worked thank the lord for this world thank the lord for every person in your life thank the lord very specially for your family members thank the lord for your father for your mother thank the lord for your husband for your wife thank the lord for your children and above all thank the lord for those who are in your home the elders thank the lord for your job thank the lord for everything that happens to you thank the lord for the education you are receiving thank the lord for every experience that you undergo thank the lord for everything thank the lord for the good health that you enjoy thank the lord for everything that is happening around you let us at this time glorify the lord who has created us who is in our midst Let us praise and worship the Lord together. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the wonders that you work in our lives. Lord, we thank you for every good deed, for every experience that you give us. Thank you, Lord, for everyone around us. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of our family members. Thank you Lord for the gift of job. Thank you Lord for all that is around me. Thank you Lord for qualifying me 
in this world to be a good neighbor to my neighbors for being a good person in my family lord jesus at this time i offer myself to you the way i am and what i am accept me lord and i have a lot to speak to you during this adoration lord at this time i present to you myself i glorify you i worship you i thank you with the spirit that you give me in my life i want to worship you i want to sing a song let us together with the choir sing the spirit of the lord a hymn that will motivate us to take part in this adoration let there be love shed among us let there be love in our eyes may now your love sweep this nation cause our soul lord to arise give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real let there be love shed among us let there be love let there be peace shed among us let there be peace in our eyes may now your peace sweep this nation cause our soul lord to arise give us a fresh understanding of brotherly peace that is real let there be peace shed among us let there be peace let there be joy shed among us let there be joy in our eyes may now your joy sweep this nation cause our soul lord to arise give us a fresh understanding of brotherly joy that is real let there be joy shed among us let there be joy my dear brothers and sisters how we can purify ourselves from attachment to mortal sin this is the topic for us today i would invite you to reflect with me on this topic along with saint francis de sales first of all why do we commit the same sin again and again secondly what happens once we give up sin thirdly what must we do if we desire to commit ourselves to the devout life and fourthly what happens if we do not give up attachment to sin now let us move on to the first question why do we commit the same sin again and again we often think and wonder why and how do i commit the same sin again and again in spite of making a good and meaningful confession with the proper preparation and right contrition this is not something unique to one person but it is the case with most of us at this point we start questioning if my prayer life 
is at stake or have i disturbed myself from god or should i need to give more time for god's work and so on and so forth all these thoughts however cannot be 100% negated nevertheless there is yet another irreparable fact that is the attachment to sin as for sin francis this is sin and attachment to sin are two entities working in two different ways yet one leading to the other and so connected to each other it is this attachment that causes us to sin again and again despite the strong resolution that i shall sin no more and i shall detest every unhappy pleasure that will take me away from the love of god and neighbor we often have the habit of looking back like the wife of lot when she turned and looked back she became the pillar of salt consumed by the rain we look back still like her our sinfulness those unhappy moments and are consumed by sin a question might arise is looking back at our past life wrong as for saint francis this is looking back at our past life is not wrong but when we look back we begin to dwell in that and ultimately we begin to convert it to the present life looking back and thinking about are two different aspects we in place of looking back at our past better life and thanking god for changing our life so beautifully we think about the unhappy moments and pleasure and that we delve into the reality which later causes us to sin again hence st francis advises not to think about the same again and again as it only creates an attachment towards sin that relieves us from it the second question what happens once we give up sin regarding this st francis de sales gives the beautiful example of melons i am going to choose another example which is more suitable to our context and the current situation our way of giving up sin is like the way a diabetic gives up sweets the diabetic does not eat sweet because of the doctor's warning that eating them would mean death but they are disturbed at having to do without them they talk of them and try to bargain if they could possibly have them they want at least to smell them and consider those who eat them to be fortunate we give up sin in just in this manner let us analyze the example of a diabetic under sweets at times we wonder why a diabetic is so much tempted to eat sweets it is because first of all sweets are tastier and its taste is mixed into our blood so whenever we see sweets 
or someone talks about it, we recollect the taste of it. That leads to the temptation of tasting it. Secondly, the attachment of the diabetic with sweets is because it has become part of his or her food habit. Therefore, I find it difficult to give up or cancel it in my menu. Thirdly, the diabetic's lack of personal conviction. Therefore, the patient begins justifying and arguing that it is not unhealthy to the body. Similarly, a penitent who has spent so much of time into sin and its pleasure, it wants to be detached from its clutches, then must undergo the process of dialysis and purifying the blood through the process of confession and devote oneself to God and Him alone after having learnt what happens once we give up sin. The next question that I must answer is, what must I do if I desire to commit myself to the devout life? To begin with, I must not only turn away from sin, but from every attachment that is connected with sin and its pleasure. I must also have a strong urge to cultivate an undying spirit, failing which will push us into the death pit to come out of it becomes impossible. It is in this manner that the true devotion consists. Unless I have a strong desire to be united with Him in spirit without causing any disturbance by way of my attachment to sin and unhappy moments of my life, one cannot be fully devoted to Him. And so, the last question that might arise in our mind at this moment is, what happens if I do not give up my attachment to sin? To put it in a simple term, one becomes a walking corpse. He or she becomes completely lifeless, like eat without enjoyment, sleep without a rest, laugh without joy and drag themselves forcefully rather than walking. A person, so to say, is just them, that's all. There is nothing that can make that person to come to life unless he or she makes a conscious and constant effort to detach from sin. Otherwise, all the good work done by the person will be out of mere spiritual weariness and will have no meaning and cause no impact in anything. Let us therefore conclude our reflection on this chapter with a question. Am I who is cleansed by the sacrament of penance ready to give up every attachment to sin or is the sacrament a mere necessity of compulsion to my devout life? Let us continue and reflect upon this message. Dear brothers and sisters, let us say the prayer to St. Francis de Sales with total devotion and keeping in mind the intentions you have with a heart dedicated and committed to Him. Let us pray earnestly. 
Please repeat after me. O oh, blessed Francis, O oh, blessed Francis, who in your life, who in your life did excel in all virtues, excel in all virtues, especially in your love of God, especially in your love of God and of your neighbor. and of your neighbor i earnestly ask you i earnestly ask to take me under your immediate protection to take me under your immediate protection to obtain from god to obtain from god my perfect conversion my perfect conversion and that of all sinners and that of all sinners teach me o father teach me o father to fix my eyes on heaven to fix my eyes on heaven that i may generously trample under foot that i may generously trample under foot every obstacle that presents itself in my way every obstacle that presents itself in my way and attain that degree of glory and attain that degree of glory which you in your mercy which you in your mercy hold out to me hold out to me obtain also the favor obtain also the favor for which i now pray for which i now pray Assist us O Lord assist us O Lord we beseech you we beseech you through the merits of saint francis de sales through the merits of saint francis de sales that what our endeavors cannot obtain that what our endeavors cannot obtain may be given to us by his intercession may be given to us by his intercession O God, O God, who for the salvation of souls, who for the salvation of souls did well, did well that Saint Francis de Sales, that Saint Francis de Sales should become all things to all men and women, should become all things to all men and women. Mercifully grant, mercifully grant that we. helped by the gentleness of his charity that we helped by the gentleness of his charity guided by his teachings guided by his teachings and sharing in his merits and sharing in his merit may obtain eternal happiness may obtain eternal happiness this we ask this we ask through Christ our lord through Christ our lord Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us rise. Raise our hands towards heaven and ask the Lord for healing upon each one of us. Lord Jesus Christ, meek and humble of heart, we ask you, our dear master of life, to take total possession of us and grant us our needs we present to you ourselves the way we are we ask you to grant us healing touch especially on those of us who are weak and fragile bless us with your grace of good health and serenity in life we ask you to bless our family members and community members bless our parents children and all of us present bless those who are sick in our families with your healing we pray we pray especially for those who live in sin and are wanting to return to you in repentance of the heart lord bless us who are weak in body and soul bless with healing for those who are suffering from one or the other sicknesses or diseases lord heal those who are suffering with brain diseases and alzheimer bless with healing 
those who are suffering with sicknesses in their eyes ears nose throat mouth tongue neck chest breast stomach sexual organs eyes knees ankles and feet bless those who are suffering from tumors fevers cancers malaria dengue covid-19 etc bless with healing for those who have undergone surgery and are worried about their recovery lord heal those on their deathbed and bless those who have given up hope in life bless those who are tense and worried in life about their jobs and security bless those who are poor and are marginalized bless those who are harassed and tortured bless those who are facing injustice and loss of property and housing bless those who are waiting for the right judgment from courts and judges bless those who are depressed and worried bless the elders and those neglected in our homes god bless those who are suffering with hatred in their own families and religious communities god bless our country with peace bless the world with unity and harmony lord thank you for your healing all of us and for your healing touch amen 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 My dear friends as we thank the Lord let us bow in adoration as we sing the benediction Let us bow in adoration to the sacrament so
Bye.